Here in North Carolina, the arrival of colder weather means the beginning of salamander season. And there are a few other herps as fun to find and observe in the wild as these gummy lizards. One of the most locally abundant species in lowland areas here in central North Carolina is the redback salamander, a small plethodonid which is famous for its ability to eke out an existence pretty much anywhere that there are cover objects and invertebrates to feed on. Despite their name, not all redbacks actually have a red back. This species is known to have two distinctive color morphs, one called the redback phase and the other known as the leadback phase. Leadbacks may have a grayish dorsal coloration or none at all, but usually still have white ventral speckling, which can help tell these apart from other plethodons, such as juvenile slimy salamanders. Different populations of redbacks have varying proportions of each color morph, depending on which phenotype most increases fitness, and this specific population seems to have a pretty even amount of each. These can be among the most abundant amphibians in the woodlands where they are found, and are both an important prey species for larger herps, birds, and mammals, and are also predators of many invertebrates. Notably, redbacks also snack on mosquito larvae that are deposited under logs, helping control populations of everyone's favorite buzzy bloodsuckers. As cute as redbacks are, they were not the target species on today's adventure. Instead, Jake and I were looking for a much larger and much chunkier salamander that you all have seen featured on my channel before, but that he had never seen in the wild. Well, we just flipped this log right here and spotted a little gem of a marble. Check it out. I don't know if you guys can see it with the camera angle there, but that is a, a gorgeous adult. Looks really healthy. Um, just about like the, a classic marbled salamander. You have that gorgeous um, pattern they're known for in the top, that kind of white marbling gives them their name, and that stout body plan that lets you know they're an investment. Yeah, so we'll go ahead and get that nice amphibian layer built up, and then we can kind of pick her up here. Now this probably is an adult female, um, if she's still down here by the pools. I don't see eggs that she's on, right now, but she could have buried them. But yeah, <laughs> right there, the little gems of the forest, dude. Oh. They don't even look real. It's crazy. Um, that is a gorgeous individual, guys. That is an awesome first marble of the season. Now, ecologically, marble salamanders um, do play a pretty important role in our ecosystems. They are, I want to say, the third largest terrestrial salamander in North Carolina, behind eastern tigers and spotteds. Um, all of them are imbistimids, though. Um, and because they are, they are these very large bodied salamanders, they do represent a lot of energy. Um, obviously, as you can see, they don't have any you know, prominent defensive mechanisms. So definitely they're providing energy for lots of animals. Also their larvae in as adults um, will consume a ton of invertebrates. That's their primary food source. Um, but adult marbles, especially when they're this size, will occasionally take other prey. So a marble of this size might also be eating small salamanders or other things like that. But they are just really gems of the forest. Their patterning is second to none. These are our state salamander as well. And I think that's a great state salamander for us to have. And there's just nothing that you cannot like about them. <laughs> I mean, they smile all the time. They're chunky. They're adorable. They are definitely my favorite salamander in the state. And so if you're ever lucky enough to see one, there's obviously no reason to be scared of them or to squish them. Um, they're not slimy, they're not nasty, they are beautiful, um, and they're an important part of our local ecosystems. All right guys, well this is actually Jake's life for Marvel. Jake, yes, what do you sir. think? I'm beyond stoked right now, me being from Florida, you know, like, never thought I'd ever have the chance to come out and find salamanders, especially out here in North Carolina with Ben. So thank you very much, Ben. Uh, you did not disappoint watching your YouTube channels. I had the uh, confidence that we come out here and find something cool and took five minutes, three logs. And yeah. Here we are in this amazing Marvel salamander. Dude, what's the coolest part about the salamander? Uh, the coolest part? Well, I have to say it's just, like you said, his eternal, his eternal grin. I mean, it's just, it's the cutest thing I've ever seen in my life. 
Now, the two most important things to remember when you're working with salamanders is one, always get that layer of dirt and water on your hands when you're handling. That just minimizes the likelihood that you will transmit a disease to the salamander or interfere with its natural um, skin mucus layer in any way. And the second thing is you always wanna put it back exactly where you found it. So we have this log right back, how we found it. Um, if someone else walked by, you could never tell it was flipped. And we'll put the salamander back literally at the exact same spot and just kind of let her crawl back under her chosen log. You know, if you love these animals and you enjoy seeing them, then it makes sense you want to respect them and their habitat. Not 20 minutes after finding our target species and Jake's life are marbled, he flipped a really nice looking moist log and uncovered something truly spectacular. Now this is a stage of marbled salamander life cycle that I have never had the pleasure of witnessing before. And it truly is a spectacular sight to behold. So this is a mature female, a really pretty, really healthy individual. And what she is doing is actually guarding her nest of eggs. Now she probably laid these eggs within the last two weeks during this fall breeding season. And as you can see, um, she's under this very moist log. Now this log is positioned at the edge of what will be within the next couple of months an ephemeral breeding pond. And that breeding pond is gonna be used by, you know, all kinds of amphibians from toads to frogs to other salamanders. But she has already deposited her eggs. The embryos are developing in those eggs right now and she will sit on top of this nest and she will guard it with her life until the water level rises. And as soon as that water touches the eggs, these guys are gonna open up and the larvae are going to come out into the water. Now we don't wanna disturb her too much, um, but I do think it's just amazing. And I can even see inside some of these eggs, those little embryos moving around. Um, and they will hatch into larval salamanders, hopefully within the next month or two. Um, but that is an amazing find. I cannot believe that Jake just found this. And I've wanted to see this, I don't even know for how long now. Um, so we'll get just a couple shots of those eggs and then we will put this log right back as we found it so she can continue defending this next generation of marbled salamanders. Well, since I was the one to find it, Ben gave me the honors to put her back. Oh my gosh, she almost got squished. <laughs> just take one more look at this. I mean, this is just absolutely mind blowing. Me and Ben talked about finding a marble on eggs. He said this is a great time of year. And he wasn't lying, man. Guy knows his stuff, so we'll let her be. Continue doing your thing, mama. Alrighty. Like Sweet. we were never even here. Dude, that is awesome. <laughs> I still can't believe it. <laughs> Alright everyone, that's just about it for today's video. I really hope that you enjoyed and learned something new about the marbled salamander. If you did enjoy, please be sure to leave a like on this video and consider subscribing to my channel for new educational wildlife content coming on Saturday mornings as often as possible. Also, if you haven't already, be sure to check out my Twitter and Instagram pages at The Wild Report for photos and video clips from my adventures. Thanks so much for watching and keep adventuring everywhere. This is Ben Zeno of The Wild Report, signing out.